This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV for Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. I'm Derek Gilbert. Topic number five again today, the border. Photos have leaked from inside a U.S. Customs and Border Protection overflow facility showing hundreds of children huddling together on the floor of eight pods. Each one of these designed to hold 260 people, but one of the photos showing over 400 unaccompanied male minors crammed together. These photos come from Democratic Representative Henry Henry Cuellar of Texas, who didn't take the pictures, but he supplied those to the news site Axios to raise awareness about the situation, which he calls uh, terrible conditions for the children. He had to smuggle these out because the Biden administration has put a media embargo on these conditions. They're not allowing the press into these facilities to document what's going on. Cuellar toured the facility at Donna, Texas. He said they need to move these kids quickly into the care of the Department of Health and and Human Services, which is also at capacity because of the recent surge of migrants across the Mexican border, which coincides with Joe Biden's inauguration. You can see the numbers on the chart on the screen behind me, that red bar showing the uh, number encountered by Border Patrol in the southwest of the United States per month uh, from the previous month, from uh, December to January, rather from January to February, you see about a 25% increase, 80,000 encounters per month, up to uh, more than 100,000 per month. But when you compare the red bars to the green bars, which represent 2020, you can see the situation has nearly, well, (laughs) uh, tripled in the past year. This is... uh, Uh, a a burgeoning crisis. The number of migrant family members caught crossing the southwest border more than doubled between January and February from 7,000 to more than about 19,000. This is according to the most recently released data from Border Patrol. And while border officials continue to use a... uh, An order from the Trump administration to quickly return many families to Mexico, Mexico has limited ability to absorb those people themselves. Uh, 42% of families were expelled to Mexico in February, down from six deaths, down 64% from January, down 91% from October. More than 13,000 family members who crossed the U.S. border illegally have been allowed into the country since the start of January, and many of those have been released into border communities. And as we told you in past weeks, some of these people were COVID positive. Officials told the Washington Post on Friday morning, a thousand people who were either unaccompanied minors or in family units crossed the Rio Grande into Texas, another thousand still awaiting processing from Thursday night. Now, the Biden administration trying to come up with a backup plan, uh, according to Axios now, has uh, awarded an $86 million contract for hotel rooms near the border to hold about 1,200 migrant family members who crossed the border. (laughs) They're paying for hotel rooms for people who have illegally crossed the border into the United States. While we have 60,000 military veterans sleeping on the streets here in the United States. In any case, uh, one other backup plan that is sure to delight our neighbors in Canada, the Department of Homeland Security told the Washington Post that the administration is considering airlifting illegals to the northern border and holding them there as they await hearings on their asylum claims. Topic number four, Israel votes going to the polls today for the fourth time in two years. Final polls aired by Channel 12 and Channel 13 in Israel toward the end of last week showed Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the verge of clinching a ruling majority in the Knesset. This would be a Welcome relief, I think, to voters in Israel who are getting tired of having to go back to the polls and do this again and again. This election was made necessary by the fact that the ruling coalition, the, uh, uh, the, the compromise reached between the Likud party of Netanyahu and Benny Gantz's blue and white party, fell apart in December when they couldn't agree on a budget for the coming, uh, the coming year. Well, in uh, recent weeks, Likud has been gaining strength. Channel 12's survey showing Netanyahu gaining momentum, the party picking up three seats in its polling last week. You need at least 60 in the Knesset to put together a ruling coalition. Um, Now, interestingly, a majority of respondents to Channel 12's poll, 51%, said they really don't want Netanyahu back as prime minister. He's still far more popular than any other single candidate. So in total, Netanyahu and his declared allies in the Shah's, UTJ, and religious Zionism parties have 51 seats. The Yamina party, which hasn't ruled out joining a Netanyahu-led coalition, would add nine more seats, which would get them to 60, and again, a majority. 
Topic number three, housing boom. Here in the United States, real estate values are surging at levels we haven't seen since 2006. Now, if you're old enough to remember it like me, back in 2006, that was just before the real estate market fell off a cliff. But experts say this time it's different. This time around, mortgage restrictions, mortgage requirements are tighter, down payments are higher, and a tight supply of housing is keeping prices up. Sales, more than 9% higher in February than they were in February of 2020. The supply of homes fell almost 30% year over year. This is the largest annual decline in the supply of available homes, just over 1 million homes available across the country. And at the current rate of sales, it would take two months to run through that supply. Now, that's just a number for comparing the available stock or inventory of existing homes. But uh, one year ago, there was a three-month supply. So again, the tighter supply, it's all supply and demand. Supply declines relative to the amount of money chasing it. It means, uh, you know, it's going to take more pieces of paper, dollars, to buy each individual home. And uh, that is reflected in home prices, which were almost 16% higher in February on average compared to a year ago. And homes are selling faster than at any time on record. The average days on market now down to just 20. This is counterintuitive considering the economic downturn caused by the COVID pandemic and the, well, frankly, the uh, lockdown of the economy that occurred in 2020. Homeowners uh, also drawing out cash from their homes, refinancing at the fastest rate since before the global financial crisis back in 2008, 2009. Almost 100, and, well, more than $150 billion cashed out in home equity last year. That's up 42% from 2019, the most since 2007, according to Wall Street Journal. And at the same time, mortgage lenders originated more mortgages than at any time in history in 2020. Some mortgage owners, uh, rather homeowners, taking out the mortgages to uh, redo their homes, since many of us are forced to spend more time in our homes than we did a year ago. Uh, For example, us taking a sitting room and turning it into an alternate uh, television studio. Uh, Others just wanting cash on hand because who knows what's going to happen when the other shoe drops from the pandemic and uh, the economic impact of the pandemic. Topic number two, speaking of unintended consequences, a Catholic priest who gets thousands of calls for exorcisms a year In Indianapolis, all over central Indiana, he gets called. He said the pandemic is making the situation worse. More calls because of the pandemic. Reverend Vince Lambert is the appointed exorcist for the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Indianapolis. He was appointed to this ministry 15 years ago, and he was one of only 12 official exorcists for the Roman Catholic Church in the United States. Now there are more than 125. He went to Rome where he apprenticed under a Franciscan priest for three months, witnessed 40 exorcisms. Lampert says, I've seen levitation, eyes rolled back in the head, foaming at the mouth, people falling on the floor, slithering like a snake across the ground, speaking languages otherwise unknown to an individual, superhuman strength. Lampert said it's a, a battle that priests have been fighting for millennia. His first step when someone reaches out, to his credit, is to get them in touch with a local priest or pastor who can provide more ongoing long-term care, even if they're from a different denomination. And this process also includes psychiatric evaluation, as well as an evaluation from a medical doctor to eliminate other possible causes like mental or physical illness. Not everything is caused by demons. They check that out first before landing on the supernatural, but he says the stress, the uh, uh, solitude that's been imposed on us through the pandemic is leading more people down paths of spiritual darkness, leading to the increased number of calls for exorcisms. And think what you will of the Roman Catholic Church, and uh, it does have its doctrinal issues. At least the Roman Catholic Church is recognizing that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and cosmic rulers over this present darkness. Coming up, apparently anti-racism means losing all sense of perspective and humor. That's next on 5 and 10. Millions of Americans are suffering a health crisis epidemic right now completely unnecessarily. But what if I told you it didn't have to be this way? The truth for many is that the real culprit of modern disease is simply a lack of God-given knowledge. 
In Unlocking Eden, we provide hopeful, scientifically supported revelations regarding how you can access freedom from the bondages of disease. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Unlocking Eden Special Collection. From the importance of detoxification, circadian rhythm, intermittent fasting, and unburdening metabolic pathways to maximizing immunity, methylation, and absolute essentials like quality sleep, Unlocking Eden is filled cover to cover with groundbreaking information that can help unlock the body's natural healing mechanisms which can revolutionize your health and your life. In this incredible special collection from Skywatch TV, you'll also receive the Unlocking Eden companion DVD, featuring the entire four-week television series on Unlocking Eden and special content with my co-author Daniel Belt and I on securing some of nature's most powerful antiviral nutrition during seasons of virus, flu, and so much more. We're also including the never-before-released special edition Eden's Essentials publication featuring special reports on gut health, chronic pain and sleep management, fermented foods, and so much more. You'll also receive the Eden's Essentials Founders Vision DVD featuring interviews with Dr. Thomas Horn and Daniel Belt and I on our vision to provide nutrient-dense supplements derived directly from non-genetically modified foods grown from clean soil free of pesticides, herbicides, and biosediments to achieve the highest degree of health possible. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of over $150. Yours now for a donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. So revolutionize your health, maximize your immunity, and restore your vitality. The Unlocking Eden Special Collection, available now at the Skywatch TV store online. Order now or call 1-844-750-4985. Topic number one today, apparently being progressive and anti-racist means that everything is about color. Case in point, the producer of Big Bang Theory, Chuck Lorre, has got a new comedy coming out on CBS called The United States of Al. It's about an Afghan military interpreter who decides to start a new life in the United States with a U.S. Marine veteran that he befriended in Afghanistan and this is coming under fire from The Woke, who've seen a 30-second trailer for the show, which has been released to the Internet. First of all, most of the criticism is directed at the casting of the lead character here, the Afghan interpreter, who is not Afghan. He's Indian, born in South, born in South Africa. Apparently, this is unacceptable to Woke America. Secondly, they're characterizing the portrayal of the main character, as ridiculous and offensive because apparently an Afghan Muslim would never befriend a white Marine from the United States. And why is that exactly? Um, having spoken to a couple of veterans who have served overseas, those military interpreters in places like Iraq and Afghanistan are at great risk. Because when our soldiers leave, as they do and eventually will in full, uh, those warlords who come back and reestablish their control over the areas where these interpreters served generally aren't too happy with those who've decided to uh, assist the Americans. So the premise is good. It's got an opportunity for cultural exchange, some humor as well if it's handled correctly. Um, this could be a good program. But the idea that you can't cast a non-Afghan as an Afghan seems a bit silly, especially since you're casting another person of color. One of the executive producers, Reza Aslan, who's, I, I don't agree with his politics or his theology. He's an Iranian-American Muslim, no friend of Christians, Donald Trump, Trump supporters. But in this, I agree with him. First of all, you can't judge a show by a 30-second trailer. Secondly, do a little homework before criticizing a news item or a story. 80% of us, self-included, often react to a story just off the headline without doing any research. There are, in fact, four Afghan characters who are played by Afghans in the show. A number of Afghan writers and producers also part of this show. But just on a bigger point here, I mean, lighten up. Isn't the whole point of acting that you pretend to be someone that you're not? Apparently not if you're woke. Well, at Skywatch TV, we depend on your support for what we do. Not just these 
video programs and the uh, broadcast program, but our work through our sister ministry at Whispering Ponies Ranch. Look up the uh, work that we do there, whisperingponiesranch.com. We depend on your support for being able to do all of these things, and uh, we always want to send a thank you for your support. During the month of March, for your donation of any amount, we'll send you a copy of Pastor Carl Gallup's book, Gods of the Final Kingdom, if you're in the U.S. or Canada. uh, You name the amount. To find out more, log on to skywatchtv.com, click the red button that says Donate. Call us during regular business hours at 844-750-4985, and thank you. The Discerning Minds Virtual Conference, coming up this weekend, kicks off at 6 p.m. Central Time in the U.S., that's UTC-5, 6 p.m. Central Time, March 26th, this Friday. Runs through 6 p.m. on Sunday. Presentations from uh, L.A. Marzulli, Pastor Paul Begley, Jamie Walden, Colonel David Giamona, uh, many others. Uh, You don't want to miss this. A wide range of topics. Gil Broussard talking about Planet 7X, what some call Nibiru or Planet X. Uh, I'll be talking about transhumanism and the days of Noah. Uh, You get access to all of these uh, programs for 90 days from the date of the conference, and if you use promo code Derek, D-E-R-E-K, promo code Derek saves you 10% on the uh, registration. Find out more and register online now at hearthewatchmen.com. That's hearthewatchmen.com. Israel is like no other place on earth, and we've got a tour that takes you places no other tour will go. We travel through Judea and Samaria, go to archaeological sites like Bethel, Shiloh, and the Altar of Joshua. We'll take you into the Golan Heights and visit Gilgal Rephaim, what they call Israel's Stonehenge, except that it's a lot older and way bigger than Stonehenge. And it's within eyesight of Mount Hermon. And then it's a quarter of a mile from the Serpent Mound of Bashan, which is three times longer, four times higher than the Great Serpent Mound in Ohio. Plus, we'll worship on the Sea of Galilee. We'll show you the, the home of Simon Peter and Capernaum. We'll go to the Jordan River and worship there and baptize you if you've not already been baptized. We will go to Jerusalem, ascend to the Temple Mount, uh, see the, sea of, or the Dead Sea, rather, and uh, visit some sites in the Negev that we've not seen before, including Solomon's Mines. So fascinating stuff. And then there's an optional three-day extension over to Jordan to see Mount Nebo, the Red Desert of Wadi Rum, and the amazing site of Petra. Don't miss it. You can find out more online, skywatchinisrael.com. We're still waiting for real clarity as far as the tour to Israel or the travel requirements to Israel. As of this recording, no vaccine is required. Despite what you might have heard elsewhere, as of this date, nothing yet required in the way of a vaccine. Yes, a uh, negative PCR test for COVID within 72 hours of your flight, that is required. But uh, if that changes, anything changes regarding the travel requirements, we will be the first to tell you. Um, You can find out more, again, online, skywatchinisrael.com, skywatchinisrael.com. This week on Skywatch TV, we talk about, uh, well, uh, an American ninja an actual champion, Daniel Gill, who is uh, the reigning champion on American Ninja Warriors, is uh, an outspoken Christian and worship leader. And he talks about the, uh, the ways in which his training, both in uh, music and in, uh, well, the, the physical arts, shall we say, helps him to uh, share the gospel message. He talks with Joe Horn, Tom Horn, and the Skywatch team. You can find our broadcast schedule online at skywatchtv.com slash channels, or just add the Skywatch TV channel to Roku or Apple TV, or download the free mobile app to your smartphone or tablet. We've got an app that uh, brings you all of our video content, as well as um, news the mainstream media wants you to miss, and a schedule of our upcoming events, all of that, right to your device, whether it's iOS, Android, or an Amazon Kindle Fire tablet. We have free apps for all of those, and uh, links to those app stores are at skywatchtv.com. You'll find my stuff linked from our website. That is gilberthouse.org, which is where you'll find our weekly Bible study. Sharon and I, every Sunday, sit down and go through the Bible verse by verse in chronological order. It's the Gilbert House Fellowship and uh, you'll find that there. All of the archives back to Genesis 1-1 more than five years ago. We're going back through the Bible now the second time. Uh, you'll find it at gilberthouse.org. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV.